Hey class, this is a video on parameterizing lines. Um, I've got a little picture for you here. The first thing we're going to be doing is writing out the equation of a line using a parameter. And the parameter is going to usually be the letter T. Okay, But to parameterize a line, the basic idea is you're going to have a line, this black line here. Uh, it'll be passing through some point, x naught, y naught, z naught and then it's parallel to a vector v, the vector v I drew in red here. All right, and it turns out um, the parametric equation for that line, so the parametric equation, well, there's actually more than one of them, so the parametric equations, the parametric equations for the line Uh, passing through the point x naught, y naught, and z naught, x naught, y naught, and z naught, and parallel to the vector, parallel to the vector v, and we're calling vector v, uh, it's going to have three components, and the three components are v1, v2, and v3. Well, the parametric equations is what they're called. We'll talk about what that means in just a second. but. Um, the parametric equations are actually um, x equals x naught plus t v one. Okay, t is actually the parameter. We'll talk about that in just a second. Y equals y naught plus t v two. Okay, same parameter t. And then z equals z naught plus t v three. And when I say x naught, y naught, z naught, that just means it has a little subscript of zero. That's how people read it, though. Okay, so these are actually the um, these are the parametric equations of a line passing through the point x naught, y naught, z naught, and parallel to the vector v. Now what does parametric mean? Parametric equations uh, represent, often in physics, t actually represents time, but they basically trace out a curve in space over time. So um, Parametric equations use a parameter t. Use a parameter t. And it doesn't have to be t, but that's the only one that we're going to be dealing with so far. Um, and again, it comes from physics, where t actually represents time. Okay? So think of, you got your vector v here, and then you've got your point x naught, y naught, z naught, and then uh, those equations actually give us, over time, the, the motion of a particle across this line. So the parameter t changes over time, and it represents time in physics. Okay, but it turns out that if you do x naught plus t v one, y naught plus t v two, and z naught plus t v three, um, that actually will cause your your particle to move along the path of that line as t goes forward. Okay, and then t can also be negative. Even though that might not make sense to have negative time, you actually can have negative time in physics. So um, t can be anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Um, so the parameter 
t is uh, goes, I should say, from negative infinity to positive infinity. It doesn't actually reach infinity or negative infinity, but it can be any number. Um, so, uh, so here, that's going to allow us to, you know, have our point. If you think about it, when t is zero, that means we're going to be right at this point. And then, um, as t becomes larger, our point is going to move along this line going this way. And then if t becomes negative or smaller, we're going to be moving this way on the line. Uh, so either way, it's going to trace out that entire line. And the parameter is usually represented with t because t is usually representing time in physics. OK. All right. So, um, so when you're actually doing a problem, most of these are not that hard. You just use these equations, but you do have to read what they ask for. Okay, so let's see an example. Okay, example. A line passes through the point. Okay, a line passes through the point. Oh gosh. A line passes through the point. And here our point is 1 comma negative 3 comma 5 and is parallel and is parallel to vector v. Uh, so vector v here is going to be 2i plus 3j plus 4k. Okay, 2i plus 3j plus 4k. All right, and um, they want us to write the standard parametric equations for the line. Okay, so find the standard parametric equations for the line. Okay, so it took me a long time to write down the directions, but um, this is actually pretty straightforward. You just want to label your vector v1, v2, and v3 for its three components. Okay, and then your point is going to be x0, y0, z0. And then literally all you have to do is uh, plug in everything into this formula. Alright, so we're just going to use this formula x equals x0 plus tv1 and so forth. Okay, so we've got x equals x0, which is 1, plus tv1, so that's going to be plus 2t. So our first equation is x equals 1 plus 2t. And then our second equation is y equals y0 plus tv2. So here y0 was negative 3. And v2 is positive 3. So this next equation is going to be y equals negative 3 plus tv2. So that's going to be plus 3t. Okay, and then our third equation is going to be z equals z0 plus tv3. Okay? So z0 was 5 and v3 was 4. So our third equation is going to be z equals 5 
plus 40. And this is probably one of the easiest things that we've done because that's actually your answer. You don't even have to do any math here. So they literally just want you to plug everything in um, and then that's your answer. So this is representing uh, this line in terms of a parameter t. And again, think of t as like time. Um, as t increases, you're going to be moving along the line one way. And if t decreases, then you're moving along the line in the opposite direction. Okay, but it's, it's not too bad. Or at least that one's not too hard. Okay, but of course they, they can't all be that easy. So uh, let's see a new example. New example. In this example, um, we have new instructions. So a line passes through two points. Okay, so a line passes through the points and they're calling the points here capital P which is negative 7 comma negative 6 comma negative 1 and capital Q which is 2 comma 1 comma negative 5 okay and here um, they're not giving us a vector so they're just giving us these points and they're asking us to find the standard parametric equations for the line okay so find the standard parametric equations for the line Okay, so um, so this one's a little bit more cryptic. And remember, when you're doing your homework, you can always use view an example if you if you want more help. Um, but the basic idea here is you're actually going to be um, writing PQ as your vector. Okay, so our vector is actually going to be PQ. And then we'll choose one of these points. We're going to use point P and, um, and go from there. Okay? So the, the trick here, oops, didn't mean to open that. Uh, the trick here is uh, use PQ, which equals, remember, PQ is actually just the same as vector Q as a position vector minus vector P. Okay, so PQ, we're going to want to use that as our vector. And I think it tells you that on some of your problems, but on other ones it doesn't tell you. Okay, but that's the trick. And then we're going to use uh, point P as our point. Okay, but first we need to write out our vector. Okay, so here vector PQ is going to equal Q minus P. So Q as a position vector is 2 comma 1 comma negative 5. 2 comma 1 comma negative 5. That's our Q, vector Q. And then we subtract vector P. So vector p is negative six comma sorry negative seven comma negative six comma negative one negative seven comma negative six comma negative one okay and um, this p q is going to be our vector v now okay so all you have to do is subtract notice we're subtracting uh, Q from P. So we're going to go ahead and distribute this minus to every single component. Okay, and switch all the signs. 
So we're really going to have 2 comma 1 comma negative 5 plus, um, and we're going to, now we're going to switch all these signs so it's going to be plus 7 comma 6 comma 1. Okay. And so now we're just going to add these vectors. I guess I'll just add them vertically because I wrote them vertically. So adding straight down, 2 plus 7 is 9, 1 plus 6 is 7, and negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Okay, so that's our vector PQ. Okay, there's PQ. And that's what we're going to use as our vector uh, our vector v that the line is parallel to. And the reason the line has to be parallel to pq is because the line actually passes through the points p and q. So the vector pq has to be right on that line. Or you can put it right on the line. So it'll have the exact same slope. It'll be pointing exactly the same direction. Okay. So that's a tricky part, but uh, now that we have our vector, this is going to be our vector v. The pq is actually vector v, so we label it v1, v2, and v3. And then we write our uh, parametric equations of a line. Okay, and you are going to want to use um, p as your point to get the standard parametric equations. Okay, so the parametric equations are going to be x equals x naught plus tv1 y equals y naught plus tv2 and z equals z naught plus tv3. Okay, so we already have our v1, v2, and v3 here. That was pq. And then for our x0, y0, z0, we're just going to use point p, the first point that we started with. Okay, so let me label that. So that's our x0, y0, and z0. Okay, so our first equation is going to be negative 7 plus 90. Okay, so we're going to have x equals negative 7 plus 9t. Since x0 was negative 7 and uh, v1 was 9. And then for our second equation, we're going to have y equals y0 plus tv2. So we said y0 is negative 6. So we have negative 6 plus tv2. Well, we said v2 is 7. So it's going to be negative 6 plus 70. And then our last equation is going to be z equals z0 plus tv3. Okay, so that's going to be um, z equals negative 1. z equals negative 1 plus, well, v3 was negative 4. So TV3 is going to be uh, negative 40. So instead of writing plus negative 40, I can just go ahead and bring the minus out and make it as um, negative 1 minus 40. Okay, and so we actually have our standard parametric equations for the line. Negative 7 plus 90 for x y equals negative 6 plus 70, and then z equals negative 1 minus 40. And then we box that. So it's basically the same as the last problem, but um, it had an extra, an extra step where you have to do pq as your vector. Since the line was passing through the points p and q, if you do pq as your vector, that's got to be parallel to the line because it's right on the line.